Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of Fantasy News, and let's just jump right into the potential Wheel of Time leaks that have a lot of evidence behind them. Three additional cast members have potentially been leaked for the Wheel of Time, at least according to their shared acting agency. These credits have since been removed, and I'm having to go off older screenshots before they were taken down. Two of the characters are notable. Christopher Skureff and Juliet Howland seem to be playing Matrim Cawthon's parents, but in a very notable what exactly is happening here piece of casting, Helena Westerman has apparently been cast for a character named Layla Ibarra. Now, I know what you're thinking. She's white. The man they've cast for Perrin is black. How could she be in Ibarra? There's been a lot of speculation for this online. One person posted without a source that their friend saw the script and she will be playing Perrin's wife. And I'm going to throw a spoiler warning here for Wheel of Time. Skip to the time code you see there if you'd like to get over it because I'm spoiling the beginning of book one. Apparently, this wife character, if this source is correct, will be killed during Winter's Night. The only reason I give this any credence is because one, the acting agency did have all three posted. Two, these credits have since been removed after the leak occurred, which makes me think Amazon got in touch and is trying to squash a leak. And three, having an older Facebook post that points to a wife and then having a white actress who's also in a bara, it only makes sense that she would be Perrin's wife. It is also worth note that this new character shares a name with a female character that Perrin, a bara, has a flirtation with an Emmons field in the books. So if this is true, it seems to be there just enhancing that flirtation to be an outright marriage. It all kind of adds up for this possible beginning to be true and feel free to speculate in the comments down below, but please add a spoilers tag. I do want to add though, this is all speculation and could be internet gossip and rumors. We don't know beyond the fairly substantial evidence that does exist currently. Feel free to believe or not believe what you want. I'm leaning into this one a little bit. But transitioning from Wheel of Time news into Brandon Sanderson news, Gizmodo got an early sneak peek for Brandon Sanderson's upcoming release, Starsight. Apparently they actually had a similar early sneak peek for Skyward itself, and now have released one for the sequel. Link to check it out in the description down below, as well as every story I talk about here, and please leave a like on the video if you don't mind while you're looking down there, because it helps me out tremendously in the algorithm. Something I have noticed though, there doesn't seem to be a name for this series yet. The cover of Starsight just says the sequel to Skyward, I think the series is called Skyward, a marketing move that seems to be similar to the rebranding of Mistborn we're seeing, where they're kind of dropping the final empire from the first book of the Mistborn series and just calling it Mistborn. I think it's a clever way to get more people to be aware of the series, remember the name, and pick up the first book without having to question themselves. Neat marketing move. Observation. I think that's the case. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's all speculation. I don't know. And in huge, apparently, adaptation news, Bone by Jeff Smith is set to be adapted by Netflix. I apparently am left out of what is a very popular and very well done comic book series here because I have never read Bone. I'm completely unfamiliar with this material. But from what I've seen online, this news is huge and people love it. So should this be added to my TBR? Do you guys want a Bone comic review from Daniel? Let me know in the comments down below. And in, this is weird even for Disney, news. Jade Bartlett has been hired on to be the writer for Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. The strange part of this Doctor Strange writing news is that she doesn't have any writing credits to her name on IMDb. I'm sure I'm missing something here, but from what I can tell, this is her first time writing a script for a movie, and it's going to be a huge Disney Marvel blockbuster. Good on you, Jade. I'm hoping this is fantastic because I'm very excited for another Doctor Strange movie. And in the last bit of Marvel news we're gonna cover here today, Jessica Henwick is apparently being considered for the lead role in Matrix Four. This adaptation is moving at a breakneck pace. It seems like only a couple months ago we were talking about the fact that it's maybe a rumor and now they're already getting their casting done with some confirmed casting already being out there. And briefly stepping back from fantasy news real quick to just talk about the wider box office in America right now. Apparently for the first nine months in 2019, Disney made up 40% of all box office results. That is bonkers. Here's the graph they have to display it, and it really puts it in context. Disney's box office returns are nearly the same size as Sony, Warner Brothers, and Universal put together. 
Wow. And while we're talking about things related to media, let's go ahead and transition into the one piece of Streaming Wars news we're going to cover here today. HBO Max has apparently secured the rights to stream Studio Ghibli films. This is the first time the studio has ever let any of their films be available digitally in this manner. For streaming, I mean. I don't know why I phrased it weird like that. But you know what I mean? This is a very good move by HBO. It definitely targets a segment of the audience which is very loyal to these movies and many of them will probably buy HBO Max just to be able to watch these movies whenever they want to. And honestly, it's made me more tempted to sign up for HBO Max myself. So there you go. Especially since now that I'm my own LLC, all streaming services that I review from are tax write-offs. And in the last bit of superhero news we're gonna cover here today, apparently they have cast Paul Dano as the Riddler to go up against Robert Pattinson's Batman. For those of you looking at that guy's face and wondering where do I know him from? Just like I was, either from Prisoners, There Will Be Blood, or Little Miss Sunshine. At least those are the things I have seen him in. We just had three stories dropped back to back in the Discord that I wanted to include here. So I'm just gonna quickly go through them and we're just gonna call this the quickie news of the day. Dwayne Johnson says Black Adam starts filming in July, 2020. Venom 2, Naomi Harris eyed to play the villain, Shriek, and Disney's live action Mulan is reportedly set for long reshoots, surprising nobody after the massive backlash they have gotten, or maybe this is in a different vein. We don't know, we'll see in the future. Sorry for this quickie news, but I was literally about to upload and I was like, I'm not, I'm not resuiting up and everything again. So quickie news. And in actual new footage release news, unlike the Witcher thing that was dropped, that was essentially just like a montage from the trailer. His Dark Materials dropped pretty much a whole scene with Lyra meeting Mrs. Coulter. Good evening, Master. Lyra, this is Mrs. Coulter. She may be of some interest to you. Oh, hello. I am not used to the grandeur of this at all. <laughs> You'll have to tell me which knife and fork to use. If you'd like to check that out, of course, link in the description down below. Please leave a like while you do that. And transitioning into Stephen King news, Alexander Skarsgård talked about his upcoming role as Randall Flagg in The Stand when he was sitting down with Sirius XM. We're just getting started, um, flying back tomorrow. I was up there last week and worked for a couple of days. Um, so is this his facial hair? This is his facial hair. <laughs> <laughs> he also took a good bit of this interview to praise the showrunner Josh Boone, who, as I'm well aware after talking with him, and I'm sure many of his other fans are, is a huge Stephen King fan. And that's something that really gives me a lot of faith for this adaptation. Here's a message to everyone involved with adaptations out there who may be listening. You don't necessarily have to have a huge mega fan as your showrunner. You don't necessarily have to have them as a director, but have them as someone with severe creative control. That helps immensely when you're first putting together the key fundamental parts of your adaptation. Capturing that magical whatever it is that makes your book or comic or video game, whatever it is that fans love so much to the TV show or movie you're turning it into. That's so key. I gotta preach that as much as I can. And in one more bit of Stephen King news, a trailer dropped for The Outsider. For those of you who've been around on the channel for a while, that was the first Stephen King book I reviewed and really loved here on the channel. I recommend you check out the trailer, link down below, and I'll also link my review of The Outsider as well. Terrence Maitland, I'm arresting you for the murder of Frankie Peterson. For the what? And in the final bit of fantasy news we're going to cover here today, a new Harry Potter subscription service is going to become available for $75 a year. It'll be similar to Disney's D23, where you'll get early and exclusive access to events, uh, merchandise, etc., etc. I don't really know how I feel about these. For those of you who have been signed up for D23, let me know if you've been happy with what you've gotten for the amount you pay in the comments down below, because I'm very curious to see what the results are for having this like, okay, I'm going to pay the franchise Harry Potter $75 a year in case they release something so I can see it early. Neat, I guess. I don't know. I'm not that big a fan, I guess, for anything. I like my money. Anyway, y'all, like and subscribe if you have not already. Hit the Patreon if you want to support what I do here. Check out the store for Fantasy News merch. I will be working on new designs in the not-too-distant future as well. And have a good one, y'all. Peace! Wah! And, of course, I would like to record a special shout-out to my latest high tier Patreons. Finor did nothing wrong and Zachary Lingley. You guys will notice 
you'll also get a shout out in Monday's video. And that's because I did multiple videos in one day without thinking. My bad, but you know, dual shout outs. Everyone should have to wait a whole weekend to get a shout out. <laughs>